This is an older XT slot, and this is the AT slot. It looks like an XT slot, but it's a bit longer. It supports 16 bits of data transfer. Even though this slot was introduced in 1984, it's still the most common bus in the desktop PC market and is now known as ISA, the Industry Standard Architecture. Here's a 16-bit ISA board. If we compare it to an 8-bit ISA board, you see that there's an extra connector. Remember that the 16-bit capability of the 286 prompted the creation of the 16-bit ISA bus. Well, now CPU chips continue to improve, and so the 386DX, 486, and later chips have a 32-bit data transfer capability, a 32-bit data path. That's a motivation for the Extended Industry Standard Architecture, or ESA, bus. It supports a 32-bit data transfer capability. ESA is not as common as ISA, but it carves out a greater share of the PC market each year. They don't look a lot different, but let's look at one anyway. Down here in this ESA machine, that's what an ESA slot looks like. Note that it looks very much like an ISA slot, but it's higher. That's because ESA slots are double-decker slots. The top part of each connector supports ISA for backward compatibility, and the bottom supports ESA. To see that, let's compare two boards. Here's the 16-bit ISA you've already seen, and here's an ESA board. You can see the ESA board projects further than the ISA board. We talked about 8-bit boards before. As you'd expect, 8-bit boards work in either 16-bit ISA, 8-bit ISA, or ESA slots. 16-bit ISA boards work in either 16-bit ISA slots or ESA slots. And ESA boards only work in ESA slots. But uh, what about this? Can I take a 16-bit ISA board and put it in an 8-bit ISA slot? Well, ordinarily, the answer is no. But some 16-bit boards are so-called smart sensing boards. These are boards that sense whether they're in an 8 or 16-bit slot. You plug them in, and they kind of go, <laughs> figure out what sort of slot they're in and behave accordingly. Some VGA boards and LAN boards come to mind here. And by the way, Here's a surprising fact about these buses. No matter how fast your computer is, its bus generally won't run faster than 8 or 10 megahertz. That means a 50 megahertz computer runs only at 8 megahertz when communicating with something in a bus slot, something like a video board, a hard disk controller, or whatever. Now, in general, that's not a terrible thing. I mean, you needn't talk to your printer or your floppy drive or your mouse at 8 megahertz, neither one runs anywhere near that speed. But that means that putting memory on an add-in expansion board is not a very good idea, at least not on a computer faster than 10 megahertz. Whenever accessing memory in an expansion slot, the PC slows down to the slower bus speed, slowing your 50 megahertz number cruncher down to 8 megahertz. That's why, when buying a PC, you should look closely at how much memory you can put on the motherboard. It's surprising how little memory motherboards from some big names can accommodate. Look for the ability to put at least 16 megabytes on the motherboard, even if you're not going to use it immediately. Believe me, you'll get there eventually. Now, of course, uh, there's an exception to that rule about slow buses. Some vendors like Compaq, or for that matter, this no-name 386 clone, have built quite a number of fast PCs that are equipped with one special high-speed slot designed specifically for memory. You can see it here. You'll know you've got one if you have a board with an unusual connector. 
That's that board over here. Notice the edge connector's in a funny spot, like this board. Now, that's an important thing to know if you're buying one of these computers. Now, it's also not unusual to see a motherboard today that has room for 8 megabytes of memory, but that expands to 16. That computer will probably expand to 16 megabytes with the addition of the special board that goes into that special high-speed slot. Now, with some computers, all the memory goes on that board. With others, the extra 8 megabytes or more goes on that expansion board. Here's the catch, though. That special board is only available from that PC's vendor. For example, the special board for compact machines won't work in the same slot as the special board for EverX machines, which won't work in the same slot as the special board for ASTs, and so on. Many people see that their computer will take 8 megabytes on the motherboard and say, 8 megs, that's a lot. No point in buying the expansion board for the second 8 megabytes yet, because I can always wait. I'll wait till I need more than 8 megabytes, and then I'll buy the memory expansion board. The trouble is, once you need the special board, the PC maker will have gone on to more advanced computers, or they may have gone out of business altogether. They won't be selling your special expansion board anymore, and so you're stuck. Now, that special expansion board generally only costs around $100. So buy it when you buy the PC, even if you're not going to use it immediately.